Okay. I am delighted to introduce to you our next speaker and member of the Thinkwater team. Um, she's an award-winning documentarian, Deborah Horde. Um, we feel incredibly lucky to have her on our team um, and have access to a nationally and internationally known filmmaker. She's also a passionate and creative activist, um, and she's going to share with you some of uh, the work she's done to document the, the kinds of efforts that Jeremy just talked about. So, Deb. Here's a picture if you need it. Okay, I could just start the film with a space bar. Uh, just click it. Click it. Okay, yeah. thanks, Laura. I'm delighted to be here after all we've all been through to get to this point. Um, I'm a documentary filmmaker and president of Photosynthesis Productions uh, based in Ithaca, New York. Uh, I've been on the Thinkwater team for about seven years, seven wonderful years, and uh, have been able to produce a wide variety of visual assets and, and animations for the team, which I'm, I'm very proud of. Uh, you've seen some already, and we're about to have the world premiere of Thinkwater Wisconsin, uh, which uh, many of the stars of the film are right here in the room. So I'm really excited for them to see it for the first time. Um, I want to take a few minutes to talk about how systems thinking has impacted my work before we show the, the, the video. Uh, first, and perhaps most importantly, it has had a major impact on the work I choose to do. Uh, I, it inspired me, for example, to create, uh, produce a documentary film about systems thinking. It's called Rethinking. I have a couple of little things to hand out if anybody's interested. But it's, it, it explores the idea that if we can explicitly teach thinking skills in our schools, we can develop students and citizens who will be uh, systems thinkers, who have deep analytical skills, who have emotional intelligence, who can detect bias. And I firmly believe that the health of our democracy is at stake with this sort of uh, ability of our people to understand and, and to make uh, decisions. So uh, that's, that's been a big impact. The film um, features the Cabreras, so that's not a surprise. Um, also, it has impacted the details of my work in a way that, um, like in editing. So film and video are very linear. I mean, it's immersive, but it's linear. It's one shot after the other, just sort of w washes over you. And so now when I choose one shot, I'm much more aware that I'm not choosing all the other ones, and that each decision I make like that uh, leads to a different story or a different re end result. Um, there's lots of perspective taking, of course. The camera sees only a tiny piece of what's in any one room. And so that's my perspective. But I'm also uh, more aware of the perspectives of the, the people I'm videotaping and or the people in the audience. So uh, DSRP has just sort of uh, swirled all around in my work. And um, I'm very excited about that. So I, my, the video is seven minutes long, so I have to get started with that right now. Um, it's the red button? No, the arrow to the right. Here we go. Oop. I'm Jeremy Solon. I'm the Wisconsin coordinator of Thinkwater. Basically what we're doing is uh, applying systems thinking to water education and outreach in Wisconsin. We have two primary strategies. Those are Wisconsin Think Water School and Wisconsin Water Thinkers Network. Both connected efforts, but the Wisconsin Think Water School is an intensive training program to help teams of educators develop systems thinking based water education programs in the state. And Wisconsin Water Thinkers Network is an effort to connect people together who are interested in water education and give them the tools and strategies to apply systems thinking in their programs and efforts. My name is Huda Alka. I'm the founder and director of Wisconsin Green Muslims, which is an environmental justice group that was formed in 2005, connecting faith, environmental justice, and sustainability through education and service. That's what we do. We think about water. Water is sacred in Islam. I'm an architect, professor of architecture and environmental design, and co-founder and director of an e-learning Designopedia. 
and its mission is to develop wonder in the built and natural world, developing eco-literacy and environmental stewardship. The idea that someone was using systems thinking to approach water was fascinating. So it was a perfect fit for the outreach that we do and the work. I'm the manager of outreach for the School of Freshwater Sciences. So I'm working to really educate people and that means getting them to understand a lot about our research and how they can do little things to help make a difference. The team that I'm part of for the Think Water School is, is the Lakes team, and it's a range of different people that are all taking similar systems approaches, uh, but we haven't been linked together yet. I am the Water Resources Program Coordinator for the City of Superior. I'm a Lakes Outreach Specialist with the University of Wisconsin Extension. My job title is Conservation Specialist. I'm the County Conservationist for Pepin County Land Conservation Department. I am the Co-Executive Director of Milwaukee Water Commons. I work for the University of Wisconsin Sea Grant Institute. I'm the Agriculture Agent in Pepin County. This was a nice opportunity for us to think about efforts that we could do uh, across the table, across the, the state, and reflects the DSRP mindset of Think Water. You learn with the group, and then you also see different perspectives of how people are learning and how they're integrating it into their own programs. So there's not a one-size-fits-all model. And then we also present our work to our peers and get feedback in how to improve or how to integrate the systems thinking in different ways into their projects. And I think that's probably the most valuable part of this training is hearing from your peers. From a water quality standpoint, we've, you know, we've been doing the same thing for generations and expecting different results. And, um, you know, here we sit with still water quality issues and this was something that was different that we didn't really know where it was going to take us, but we were willing to try it. One of the things I found most interesting that you have to really tell people or model in some way what you want people to learn. I think it's important to have a framework to implement change, and it helps to understand, especially in these times where we're so polarized, to know how we're thinking about a subject. You know, and it takes a while to change behavior. Water is a teacher. There's no better medium to really connect people together. All the droplets that come together from different areas, they don't say, oh, wait, I came from one area and that other droplets come from another area so we not interact with each other. They do. They all come together. Systems thinking is an activator for change. It's the understanding that what I do every day in my life connects to everything somehow, but knowing what that connection is, is gonna be key. You know, it's been a challenge at times because you come thinking we're really struggling and you feel almost embarrassed to share your story here within the group, but then you find that everybody has the same story and we can help each other. And so it has been very, very valuable for us. It's easy when conflict arises to just throw in the towel and, and move on. And when you work with people, sometimes it's easier to work with the people that want to work with you. But we also recognize that those people that are calling us on the carpet or asking tough questions or demanding certain things also help shape a really positive program and a positive outcome. Every state should have a Think Water School. And I don't think it has to be just water. I think this can apply to everything and in fact already in my job I keep coming back and talking about how awesome this is and they're like teach us. It should be deployed on really tough problems, <laughs> things that are extremely sticky. And, and seem to be intractable. Once they solve some problems, they can probably better solve the next round of problems and the next round of problems. And at some point, they actually get better at solving other problems, bigger problems, or more intractable problems. We like to say, you know, we're focused on water, but what we do is content agnostic. We can apply it to climate change, apply it to social justice, we can apply it to economic issues, any of those things. 
And I think that's ultimately where we have to get to, right? Is not just one topic, but how do we build a nation of systems thinkers and a world of systems thinkers who can engage with issues and, and uh, address them. So I think they did a great job. <laughs> Thanks so much. I think that's the end of this segment.